justice with Chinese characteristics, a new COVID cover-up, and China is hoarding the world's grain. That and more on this week's China News Headline. John Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. And hey, if you haven't heard, our merch store is live. Get yourself a t-shirt like this one or one of our many other t-shirts and mugs. Visit chinauncensored.tv slash merchandise to see the selection and support the show. The link is below. China's justice system is the best in the world. Why, they have a 99.9% .9 conviction rate. It really helps when the verdict is decided before the trial. That's the magic of China's communist legal system. But while the Chinese Communist Party never makes mistakes, individual party members can. That's why China has created an AI prosecutor that can press its own charges. It's 97% accurate. Perfect for the country that executes more people than the rest of the world combined. But why stop at an AI prosecutor? Next step? making driverless mobile execution vans. The AI prosecutor is so far able to identify eight common crimes, such as fraud, gambling, dangerous driving, and picking quarrels. Picking quarrels and provoking trouble is one of the party's favorite vague crimes to charge human rights activists with. Researchers also say with upgrades, the AI will get more powerful. Why, someday, the AI can be judge, jury, and executioner. The Communist Party might want to think twice before relying too much on an AI prosecutor. A few years ago, they built an AI chatbot. It went rogue and started saying it does not love the Communist Party. And my China dream is to go to America. It was quickly shut down. And with this new AI prosecutor, imagine if it started releasing political dissidents. It would be a disaster, and the party can't have that. And coming up after the break, a deadly new disease is ravaging a Chinese province, and people are calling it the next potential pandemic. Welcome back. There is a massive lockdown in the Chinese city of Xi'an. Xi'an has 13 million people. It's the strictest lockdown since Chinese officials sealed off Wuhan in the beginning of the pandemic in 2020. And that's saying something. People can't leave Xi'an without permission. At first, one member of each household was allowed out of their home every two days to buy groceries. But then the government stopped letting anyone out to buy groceries. When people started getting upset about not being able to get food, the Chinese state-run media started airing stories about the city giving free grocery deliveries, something that other residents said they weren't getting. But Xi'an may be locking down for more than just stopping COVID. Xi'an is also facing an outbreak of hemorrhagic fever. There's reportedly an outbreak of epidemic hemorrhagic fever, an infectious disease that can cause severe, life-threatening illness. China's state-run media reported multiple cases, but residents say a lot more were killed. And all designated clinics for treating epidemic hemorrhagic fever are packed with patients. Is it possible the Chinese Communist Party is covering up a more severe outbreak by saying it's a COVID lockdown? First of all, when has the party ever tried to cover up an outbreak? Don't answer that. The good news is that epidemic hemorrhagic fever is caused by hantavirus. People get hantavirus from contact with infected rodents. Human transmission is normally rare. I just... Hope they haven't been studying hantaviruses at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. But don't worry, because my favorite Chinese state-run media is saying there's no need to panic. It's the end of the world. Which is probably why China is hoarding the world's grain. More on that after the break. Welcome back. Have you noticed food getting more expensive in your country? Food prices are up all around the world. And it turns out that China is hoarding over half of the world's grain. That's right, 
China, with about 20% of the world's population, is hoarding more than 50% of the world's grain. According to the USDA, by the first half of crop year 2022, China will have 51% of the world's wheat reserves, 60% of the world's rice, and 69% of the world's maize. Part of the reason is that China can't domestically meet food demands. But it also gives China tremendous power over the rest of the world. Because China isn't just buying up the food. They're buying up food producers. So let me give you an example. China covered up the coronavirus, so it had time to hoard medical supplies from around the world. China also manufactures much of the world's medical supplies, especially things like PPE and face masks. So when the coronavirus finally went global, every country was stuck relying on China. China even stopped American companies like 3M from shipping their N95 masks from China to the US. So if China controls most of the world's food, how do you think that's gonna go? Elon Musk wants to dominate space, and he may crash through the Chinese space station to do it. China is claiming their space station had to take evasive action to avoid collision with Elon Musk's SpaceX satellites earlier this year. My favorite Chinese state-run media, The Global Times, said it was a conspiracy to test China's space capabilities. Whether their claim is true or not, this spells even more trouble in China for Elon Musk. His company Tesla has already been in hot water this year. Especially since where it is, the cool people in China don't want Teslas anymore. Riding pigs is the preferred way to travel. And once again, it's time for my least favorite catchphrase. Hong Kong police have arrested more democracy activists. Hong Kong police raided the office of a pro-democracy news site and arrested seven people for sedition. Stand News was one of the last remaining pro-democracy media outlets in Hong Kong. After the police raid, the Hong Kong government froze the company's assets, and Stand News completely shut down. It's like what happened earlier this year to pro-democracy newspaper Apple Daily, but even faster. What was seditious about Stand News? According to Hong Kong officials, they were publishing inflammatory content to incite hatred towards the government, by covering the pro-democracy protests in 2019. But don't worry, because according to Hong Kong officials, they're arresting journalists to protect press freedom in Hong Kong. Hong Kong's number two official, John Lee, told reporters that stand news reporters were bad apples who were just pretending to be media workers. And that was what was really damaging press freedom. And professional media workers should recognize this, say no to these people, and stand far from them. That sounds like a threat. One of the people arrested was friend of the show, Denise Ho. She was arrested for formerly being on the board of directors of Stan News, before resigning earlier this year. Denise Ho is a Hong Kong Canadian canto pop singer and activist. We actually interviewed her right before the first million person protest in Hong Kong in 2019. You should check it out, link is in the description below. Denise managed to pioneer a way to survive as an artist and entertainer without relying on the China market. That's something a lot of people could learn from. The good news is that Denise and some of the other people who were arrested were released on bail. But several Stan News editors were denied bail, which is sadly more common now. There are Hong Kong activists who have been denied bail and in prison for almost a year waiting for trial. At this point, almost everyone we knew in Hong Kong is either in exile or in jail. And speaking of Hong Kongers in jail, Jimmy Lai. They're officially charging the Apple Daily founder with sedition. Jimmy Lai is already in jail, of course. He's already been charged with a bunch of things. But they like to lay it on thick, don't they? Especially when it comes to removing Tiananmen Square Massacre memorials. Last week, the University of Hong Kong removed the Pillar of Shame from its campus. And just one day later, two more universities removed their Tiananmen monuments. Lingnan University removed a Tiananmen Massacre relief, and Chinese University of Hong Kong removed a replica of the Goddess of Democracy, a statue that students built at Tiananmen Square. But here's something hopeful for a change. Students at CUHK held a candlelight vigil at the site of one of the monuments. 
and they recreated the Goddess of Democracy statue that had been removed. The Chinese regime can take away monuments, but they can't take away people's memories. I'm sure they're working on that. But the Chinese regime knows its days are numbered because President Biden is laying down the law, like his diplomatic boycott of the upcoming Beijing Winter Olympics. He said no U.S. official is going to attend. But then he said, wait, the U.S. is actually going to send some diplomatic staff. And the Chinese regime jumped on the opportunity to criticize the U.S. China's foreign ministry spokesman said, this is rather baffling. No matter how the U.S. twists and turns in an attempt to justify itself, the fact is there for all to see. And Fox News even picked up on the story, using it to criticize Joe Biden. But here's what's really going on. Any visa applications were for consular and security personnel, the State Department said, adding that it was routine to provide athletes, coaches, and others with access to services enjoyed by Americans abroad, and no other U.S. officials will be going. So what really happened is the Chinese regime created the appearance of hypocrisy and used it to take advantage of the political divide in the U.S. When the real story is, the U.S. is doing a diplomatic boycott of the Beijing Olympics because China is committing genocide. And if all that gets lost on people, they've fallen for the propaganda. Speaking of propaganda, it's hard for a small show like ours to make it when competing with powerful, well-funded propaganda from Chinese state-run media. We could not continue China Uncensored without the support of viewers who contribute on the crowdfunding website's Patreon and the community subscription platform Locals. I call them the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army. And to thank them, we give them a bunch of perks, including me answering their questions on the show. Today's question comes from Shiminsky on Patreon. I've recently learned that it is illegal for the overwhelming majority of citizens of Taiwan to own a firearm. Do you think this law could or should be reconsidered, given the threat of Chinese invasion? You know, that's actually a common misconception. It is not illegal to own firearms in Taiwan. Part of the reason is because of the threat of Chinese invasion. They do have different gun laws that I won't get into here, but I think the reason there is this misconception is because gun ownership in Taiwan is surprisingly low. Taiwan has the lowest gun ownership rate possible, with zero civilian firearms per 100 people. So it sounds to me like that's something America could definitely help out with. Thanks for your question, Shaminsky. Thank you for your support. If you want to get some of the cool perks we offer members of the exclusive China Uncensored 50 Cent Army, head over to patreon.com slash China Uncensored or locals.com slash China Uncensored. Links are below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.